think it presents my ideas well. There's good uh, point and counterpoint. Here in the United States, it's done extremely well. It's been the number two documentary in the country on iTunes. Uh, there's been a million downloads on the internet. Uh, it's been critically acclaimed. So I'm sure you'll enjoy it in Australia. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, actually. A lot of people are. Yet, in t um, how did you first uh, get together on the Transcendent Man project with well, Barry? Well, Barry, do you want to sure. address well, that? You know, uh, I came across Ray's book, The Singularity is Near, in 2005, actually the, the first month of 2006, and uh, gave it a read, and it, it um, you know, to say it struck my fancy was an understatement. Uh, Frankly, it blew me away, as it as a lot of people, uh, or it has for a lot of people. But uh, I came at I come at books from the perspective of a filmmaker, and when I had read the, just the first few chapters, and I had been looking for a project for some time, and when I saw when I read the first few chapters, I said, "Aha! If I take uh, the power, the amplifying power of cinema, and I uh, merge that with the, the what Ray was talking about." You know, I, I thought we would have something. We'd have something that would be powerful and profound in, in the form of a, of a film. So uh, together with my producing partner and my wife, Felicia, we, we contacted Ray, and he was uh, gracious enough to meet us and to hear us out. And we pitched him uh, this notion and this concept of uh, this documentary. I didn't, we weren't calling it Transcendent Man back then in 2007 when we met Ray for the first time. But uh, we said, you know, we'd like to follow you around. We'd like to have access to, to you and what you're doing, the people you're meeting, your family, your friends. Get to know who you are, what makes you tick, and see if we could create the, you know, this narrative story. And um, you know, lo and behold, a couple of years go by, we followed right around to over five countries and over 30 cities, and interviewed over 70 thought leaders. And um, the culmination of all that. Uh, and, many, and a lot of other fortuitous um, accidents along the way has given us Transcendent Man, the movie. And I, you know, I tend to make decisions pretty quickly, very often fateful decisions, and uh, I'd gotten other inquiries like this. Uh, there was something about Barry and Felicia's email that was appealing, so I met them, and very quickly I said, okay, sure. And then they followed me around for a couple of years. Uh, and I was not involved in the making of the movie. I didn't see the movie at all until actually shortly before it, it premiered at the Tribeca Film Festival. That's, uh, an that's an important point because a lot of people suggest that Ray's just trying to promote himself or trying to promote his vitamin line or whatever, um, but he had no idea what was going to be in the film. We filmed over 200 hours, like I said, over, over a couple of years, and um, you know we could have made many different types of films and Ray didn't really know what kind of film we were making until he saw it and there was no way to change the film and we were only three weeks from the world premiere so I had I, I, I do and I say this a lot you know Ray's one of the w uh, very courageous for doing that I mean we could have for heaven's sakes we could have defamed him uh, he, he just did not know but there was no intent on his part to in any way shape or creatively shape the film or suggest that we should promote something or anything else, it was completely an independent endeavor. Well, look, there's just so much power in these ideas. I'm, I'm quite surprised it hasn't been taken up by lots of many people early on. Um, in Australia, I think we're maybe lagging a little bit behind in sort of awareness of these technologies and uh, it, it really hitting mainstream. And this year, um, 2011, has been huge for artificial intelligence and it reaching some forms of mainstream and transcendent man's done very well but it's also hit um you know the front page of or the the cover of time magazine ray well done <laughs> it's well, amazing yeah <laughs> the ideas are and what's yeah. of it? the ideas are circulating and they're getting more credence uh and the evidence is accumulating you mentioned artificial intelligence i mean watson uh defeating the best two human Jeopardy players combined uh, is impressive because Jeopardy it's all about human language and the subtleties of human language uh, jokes and puns and metaphors and similes uh, the kind of thing that people earlier said oh well computers can play chess but they'll never deal with these vagaries of language and uh, Watson not only understood the, 
the queries, but also had read all of Wikipedia and other encyclopedias to get its knowledge. It got its knowledge on its own by reading the way students do. Uh, so it has a learning capacity. And that kind of AI is now going to be applied to other areas like medicine. Well, the media has been reacting very positively um, in America. Um, how do you think it's, um, have you had any negative reactions to the singularities in your book and um, the Transcendent Man film? Well, the whole area is controversial, I think properly so, because technology is a double-edged sword. I agree with that, actually, and I've written extensively about the downsides. So, for example, Bill McKibben, uh, noted environmentalist, good friend of mine, the first to write about global warming, but he wrote a book called Enough, which basically says, technology has been a good thing, but enough is enough, and uh, let's not do it anymore. Let's stop artificial intelligence, genetic engineering, nanotechnology, because they're too dangerous. And then he quotes my books uh, extensively, citing the dangers, because actually I agree with him uh, that these dangers exist. We don't agree on what to do about them. Relinquishment, meaning let's not pursue them, is unrealistic. It would deprive us of the profound benefits we still need. There's still a lot of sick people we'd like to cure. Uh, it would require totalitarian government to implement a ban on technology. That was the moral of the novel Brave New World. Most importantly, it would drive these technologies underground where they'd be even more dangerous. That also happened in Brave New World. Uh, the right answer is to actually build defensive systems where we can protect ourselves from abuse. And a good example of where we've actually done that very well is in the area of software viruses. If we sat back and said no one would ever put out a destructive software virus, the internet wouldn't last very long. Uh, we have a technological immune system, just like the biological immune system we have, that quickly uh, detects new software viruses and, and then works with human help to deactivate them, create an new antiviral progr programs that are spread out virally on the internet. And it's worked very well. Nobody's taken down the internet for even a second over the last 10 years. Uh, that's a good model of how we need to deal with all of these dangers. Someone could do the same thing with biological viruses, and we need a similar uh, technological immune system to deal with that. Is there anything you'd like to say to introduce a Transcendent Man movie that's going to be premiering for the first time in Australia on August the 19th? Well, uh, as I mentioned, it's a great movie. Uh, Barry has actually presented the controversy both on feasibility and desirability. There are naysayers, there's point, counterpoint. counterpoint. Uh, he does make a linkage between my personal life and the use of these technologies and, and their development. Uh, it's a beautifully made film, just the cinematography and the way the ideas are portrayed. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm proud to be in it and be the subject of, of the movie. And it, uh, it's great that Australians will have the opportunity to see it. Definitely. Um, Barry, have you got anything to say? Well, I echo what you know, Ray's sentiments are. And we're really pleased to, uh, to share the movie for the first time down under, uh, to bring it to your part of the world. Uh, it's taken a while to get down there. But now that it is, I, I'm glad to see it. Um, first premiere at the Singularity Summit, which is appropriate. Um, and we're working on plans to get it uh, distributed widely down in Australia. So uh, hopefully, perhaps even by the end of this year, you'll see it um, at your local retail stores uh, available as a DVD, which would be exciting. But, um, but, but, but like what Ray said, we're, I'm proud to, uh, to be joining with Ray here to announce um, this premiere at the Singularity Summit, and um, you know, enjoy the film. Well, I'm sure we will. Um, so, is there anything you'd like to say about uh, the Singularity Summit happening in Australia? Well, it's it's great to see uh, that institution spread around the world. I started. Uh, I was a co-founder of the Singularity Summit some years ago in the United States. Uh, it has spread now to different continents. 
Uh, and I think Australia has a lot to contribute to it. And it's great to see a growing singularitarian movement. And, you know, as a movement, there's no ideology. People have different views on exactly how things will happen, what the implications are, what we should be doing about it, how to ensure the safety of it, and apply these growing technologies to uh, the problems of today. Uh, and that's good. Um, so uh, it's great to see it come to Australia. Um, I, I hear actually too that you're going to be in Australia right, in, in, in the next the few months. In November I'll be there and uh, very much looking forward to that. Uh, I've always yeah. wanted to go to Australia and so I've got a number of speaking events coming up there and I look forward to uh, sharing your continent. Yeah, yeah, it's creative innovation. I think the one in Melbourne that you'll yeah. be uh, speaking at. Right. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, I hope to be able to see you there. It'd be really good. I hope so. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, um, is there any uh, concluding remarks you'd like to make? Well, i just make one more point, which is it's not just these gadgets that are affected. Everything we care about is ultimately going to be transformed. Energy is being transformed by applying nanotechnology to solar panels and our health and longevity. It's being transformed as we apply information technology to medicine. Uh, it's going to affect things like poverty. It already is. Education. There's an, certainly, go to a music conference. I was at the National Association of Music Merchants recently, and uh, it's like a computer conference with the advanced uh, technologies we, we use to create music or graphic arts. Uh, I was at a librarian conference, American Li Librarian Association. It's like a computer conference uh, with all the advanced methods we have of storing information now and retrieving it. So every uh, facet of life is going to be deeply impacted. And you can see everybody using it. I go through airports and every kid, you know, four-year-olds, eight-year-olds are all with their computerized devices. They're communicating with people around the world. I, I think it's very democratizing. really appreciate your time guys and yeah look forward to seeing you in australia right yeah likewise and thanks very much barry that was that was really good of you to allow us to uh to have a viewing of the film it's uh, our pleasure and uh, yeah. we look forward to hearing uh, how it went so hope it goes well yeah it will yeah definitely sure. i can imagine all right well um nice speaking great, great to talk to you thank have you have a great evening you too